Perfectly smoked, a nice peppery crust. What more do you want out of your pastrami? Oh, hi, I'm Shuey, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make pastrami in a Weber kettle. So just sit back, grab a drink or two, and let's get into it. I'm gonna be using this 1.9 kilogram grass-fed Cape Grim corned beef silver side for today's cook. So we just need to get it out of the bag. So the only trimming these need is, I like to remove as much of the excess outer fat that I can. So that's it, that's what I've removed. Now you don't have to remove all of the fat, but I like to remove as much as I can. Even though the corn silver side is pretty slippery, it's like wrestling a slinky in jello. Corned beef is salty and we need to remove some of that salty taste before we smoke it. So into a bath of cold water it goes. And we need to soak this overnight, changing the water every couple of hours. Obviously not while we're sleeping, just every time you think of it that night and the next morning will do. The corned beef has enjoyed its time at the day spa, so we can just pat it dry with paper towel and get it ready for its coating of flavour. You know, it's not too early to like this video. As much as pastrami is known for its deep colour, it's also known for its heavy coriander and black pepper rub. So let's make some. So into a rub shaker, we're going to put some ground coriander and some coarsely ground black pepper, some mustard powder, garlic and onion powder, dark brown sugar, and some smoked paprika. Shake it up real good and apply it to the freshly bathed corn silver side. Ooh, look at that color. And make sure you get every side. We want this properly and thoroughly covered. And then all we have to do is we're gonna put this aside while we get our barbecue ready. Now, if you don't have a rub shaker, use your hands because using your feet would be weird and gross. Today, I'm gonna to be using a 57 centimeter Weber kettle and I'm gonna be using the snake method because I wanna be cooking at temps of 120 degrees Celsius today. It's easy enough to do. We're just going to add an outer ring of charcoal to the very edge of the charcoal grate. And then we're just gonna add a second row of briquettes and making sure that they're touching the first row of briquettes. And now we're just gonna add the top row. And as you can see, I've made the snake go around all the way or nearly all the way. I always find it's better to have more fuel than not enough. And now we can just add a foil pan to the bottom to help with cleanup. Next up, we can position some smoking wood around our snake. So put one right at the start of the snake and position the others about 50 mil apart because you'll find smoking wood burns a lot quicker than the briquettes and you don't want it pushing the snake around. Lastly, we want to light up 12 briquettes and when they're fully ashed over, we're going to dump them at one end of our snake. We can put the grill back in place. Now we can add an ambient temp probe so we can track the Weber's internal temp keeping the probe on the opposite side of that lit fuel. Now we wanna add the lid, opening the vent, and we wanna keep the vent on the opposite side of that lit fuel too. We're gonna to allow the Weber to warm up. As it gets close to our target temp, we're gonna close down that bowl vent. This would be a great time to subscribe to my channel. And while you're there, hit that bell button. That bell button's gonna allow you to be notified every time I throw more stuff at my Weber. When the Weber's at temp, we can just get the pastrami on. We wanna put it on the opposite side of the lit fuel. And we just wanna stick an internal temp probe into the thickest part and pop the lid back on. And we're just gonna set the internal temp probe to 74 degrees Celsius. By keeping the lid vent over our food while we're cooking, it's gonna draw the heat and the smoke around that pastrami. Today, I'm cooking at a temp of 120 degrees Celsius. And all up, our cook's gonna take around nine hours. Or for those of you who like to use my beer timer, that's an 18 beer cook. <laughs> Trust in the beer timer, it's never wrong. Every hour or so, you wanna check on the pastrami. We wanna keep the pastrami on the opposite side of the lit fuel, so we're just gonna spin the grill and the lid as well. We wanna keep that lid vent on the opposite side of our fuel as well. So we're drawing that heat and that smoke over that pastrami all the way through the cook. Obviously, use heat-proof gloves because that grill is going to be hot. Now, by all means, you can kick it, but I don't recommend you do. Well, look at that. The pastrami has reached 74 degrees internally. We just need to pop this aside now. We're gonna allow this to cool down and then we're gonna put it in the fridge overnight to chill it. By chilling it right down, we're gonna be able to slice it really thinly. Tomorrow, I haven't eaten for two days already. This better be good. There's so much conflicting information out there on how to smoke a pastrami. Should you soak it? 
and how long for? How hot to smoke it? And if so, how long for? And what internal temp to take it to? Guess what? You can do it your way or you can do it my way. I like to slice mine thin, so I make my recipe to suit that. Pushing the internal temp in my recipe any further and it will start to crumble as I slice it nice and thin. Now we can see the grain sort of runs this way, so I'm actually gonna cut the whole pastrami in half. How good does that look? Then using my meat slicer to get super thin slices. Or you could use a knife, just make sure it's a really, really sharp knife. There's no denying it today. It's that good, it should be illegal. Mmm, mmm, mmm. As always, cheers for watching.